Hello, everybody. This is Liam Billingham, co-host of Uvra Busters. Before we jump into this week's episode on Mission Impossible 3, featuring Philip Seymour Hoffman and co-hosted by Jose Rodriguez, I wanted to remind you to please, if this is your first time, if this is your second time, if you've listened to every episode, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show so that we can get more listens. We had no new ratings and no new reviews in the past few weeks. Where are you people? We give and we give and we give and we give. And all we ask in return is just a rate, review, or subscription. Thank you. Uh, We would appreciate it. I'm going to leave you now. This episode went a little long. Jose was such a delightful, insightful, funny, smart guest that we let it go and go and go because we could honestly talk about Mission Impossible forever. So I hope you enjoy this slightly longer than usual or slightly longer than of late episode of Oeuvre Busters. Bye-bye. I'm Liam Billingham. I'm George Fragopoulos. I'm Jose Rodriguez. Ooh, that was really good. <gasps> this is <laughs> Uber Busters. Yay! Yay! We, did a call. we did it. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2 and the sexiness. <laughs> We're dealing with another sequel here. Pa- yes. So what film are we talking about, George? Mission Impossible 3 from 2006, directed by... J.J. Abrams. I totally forgot. Yeah, I thought this was when uh, that uh, Macquarie guy got on the on the scene, but apparently no, it was wrong. No, that was Valkyrie. Yeah. For those oh, keeping yeah. keeping uh, score at Cruise. home. This is the highest budgeted film by a first-time director making a oh, shit. Film. Because JJ obviously did uh, Felicity, uh, Felicity and right. um, Alias, but he never and directed hence, a movie. This is his before. feature debut. As his a first feature as a dr- wow. Hence the random Carrie Russelling in this. Yeah. For the first time I saw, I was like, oh my oh, god, well, Carrie let's Russell's not speak in this. Ill of Carrie Russell. I, is that as speaking ill? No, I'm just no, saying no, that no, she randomly felt appears. Little random. Yeah, she's just in this film. I was like, oh my god, it's Carrie <laughs> Russell. And one of the reasons I say that is because she's not at, like given anything to do. True, very which true. Which is one of the so this is directed by JJ Abrams, starring Tom Cruise. Uh, Who is by the can we, Scott, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not really name? familiar Scott, with Scott, this Scott, Simon Pegg, Simon Pegg. Yes, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is his first film, I think. First film, right? It's yeah, first yeah. Film. Um, he's, he's rather good in it. I think yeah, this kid has a future. Uh, Actually, I don't think he's very good in it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So Tom Cruise, Ving Rhames, um, Simon, Simon Pegg. Pegg. Mr. Uh, Jonathan Rhys Myers. John Rhys Myers. Who didn't? Uh, Maggie Q. Maggie Q. Ooh. Who's a super. Un- yep. Who's a, su- <laughs> yep, who's a <laughs> <Yeah>. super under <laughs> underutilized for part of the movie. Right. Well, all the women are. Mr. Ex- Mr. Fishburne. Mr. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne, who's great. Yeah. Billy Crudup. Billy Crudup. Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Manhattan himself. Yeah. Mastercard. Remember, he was. Uh, Mastercard. <laughs> Mastercard. So, should we quickly talk about what this film. And of course, obviously, we didn't mention Philip Seymour Hoffman. As Owen Davian. Yeah. Davian. 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 Owen Such Davian. A, you know, there's a type of. Um, There's a typo in the original in the original script. Really? Well, I mean, it just feels that way. Like, wait, oh, oh yeah. his, so his <laughs> name's <laughs> Damien, right? They're like, what well, says Davian here? Davian. Let's just go with it, Damien. Let's we'll change we it later. Time. We don't have time. Yeah, it's my yeah, first yeah, feature. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. really nervous. I'm writing the screenplay really quickly. Tom is uh, constantly calling me, telling me when it's going to be ready. <laughs> Tom, I got to get this in. Um, l- before we jump into the plot of this one, I want to hear your Mission Impossible rankings, Jose. As the Oof. guest, you're first. Well, as our best experts, to worst, I should say. Num- number one is the best. De Palma, I thought out of the gate. Killed it. It's I a like great that. movie. Number two, Fallout. Ah, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> number three, number three, actually. Really? Wow. Yes. Wow. So this one is your third favorite. Because then there's four and five. Honestly, I couldn't tell you right now what happens in each one. They mesh in together. Oh, that's so interesting. That's fair, but yeah, but wrong, but fair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fair, but wrong. <laughs> Congratulations, um, you're wrong. And so four and five can be. In- Honestly, like in- interchangeable. interchangeable I haven't okay. seen them in in several years. Mm-hmm. So that you're talking about Ghost Protocol. Oh wait, and two. Wait, I forgot two. Um, I would maybe say maybe two is at the bottom. Yeah, I think we all would George? maybe we all agree. So I would say that. Oof. I get. I will say I do agree with Jose that four and five do kind of like mesh Interesting. in, okay. in together. But I think which one's the one where he's like on the on the tower and four is it okay? So I four would say is the one on the glass. Yeah, he's like I yeah. would say four six one. Four is the best for you. Yes, four uh, six one six five. Being Fallout, right? Yeah. Yes. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I was like what? Four six one. <laughs> yep. Four six one. Uh huh. One three two. Four six one three. Uh, one three two. That is an interesting bottom. ranking. Yeah. Mm. So for me, it goes Fallout. I think Fallout is like because of the because of the stash. I think it's a masterpiece. And, yeah. and except for Henry Cavill, <laughs> then oh, one, like Come on. and no, then one. I don't think he's very good in it. No, he is. Uh, six was so Fallout. 
Mission Impossible, and they're like this. For me, they're like yeah. so close together. Yeah. Si- um, Fallout, Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, mm-hmm. Rogue Nation, right. Mission Impossible 3, Mission Impossible 2. Mm. I think we all... That second one, which is so disappointing because it was John Woo. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. But Have you guys is. watched it I re- recently? I li- so yes. When you guys told me to come on board... This which I had a negotiation for it, months, you know, so it's it's like back, back and, and forth. forth and like, like is rates will and he, like, will he, won't he? How much do I talk? Yeah. Don't <laughs> do, please don't uh, deposit the check until we tell you yeah, to, by the yeah. way, because it's not oh, much in the account. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're waiting for the check clock's from, taking, guys. from Christopher <laughs> McQuarrie. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I did see, I think I was flying back on a like long trip and they had one through three on the flight. Wow, and so one I had seen recently, so I I watched all of two, I think, and then. Watched three and then finished it later because it was in prime. And what I did last night was rewatch all of Philip Seymour Hoffman's scenes to wow. like really uh-huh. get a sense of. You did more research than prepared. we did. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Where do you feel you don't like two? So, so two. So here's the thing. I think the first one, they, you know, it's like Tom Cruise is like the biggest thing ever. He still is, but at nine, nine, 1996, let's get De Palma. Who's never really done a commercial. Yeah, that's film. true. Very, very. And then I don't think it did. Like it was a huge box office. I think it was a solid box office. Yeah, hit, it did really well. But but nobody really kind of looks back on it fondly. Right, right. And then it was like, let's just make it a just complete like action yeah. big scale. Yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then John Woo did Broken Arrow and Face Off, and they're like. Eh. Like that's good him, and yeah. I think he probably wanted to do like a big. That was probably a, that was like his last Hollywood movie. I feel like he did that. Yeah. Oh, and then Paycheck. That, when well, wow. Paycheck was Ben Affleck, Affleck and, and then he Thurman. just keep kept going down. I skipped it, and I was a John Woo acolyte. In but the 90s. I'll, I'll I want to remind you guys that for Mission Impossible Two, there is literal line of dialogue where Anthony Hopkins. You know where I'm going with this? I forgot Anthony, that Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins yes, it's like, not. He's giving him the mission, the assignment, <laughs> and Tom Cruise. Is like looking at him like pissed off, and Anthony Hopkins like, you think this will be difficult? And he goes, Tom Cruise, go, Ethan Hunt goes, very. And then Anthony Hopkins, and by the way, Robert Town wrote the script. <laughs> yeah, Robert Town wrote the script. And that then Anthony Hopkins goes, well, this isn't mission difficult, Mr. Hopkins. Oh, yeah. Mission impossible. <laughs> difficult must be a walk in the park for you. <laughs> And Anthony Hopkins' delivery of that line is very and good. There's no only good. one person there's who can. There's only one human. That would explain but also the like later in that film all those like weird negotiations they have about like all like those water deals in California, right? And about like you know, what's going to happen. Thing, yeah. Anybody? Do you know that no? this is Robert a remake? Hammond? Chinatown. Mm-hmm. No. no. This one. one. This film is a <laughs> remake. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, what? Water Liam likes deals? to bury me in the in the <laughs> audience. <laughs> wait, what water deals? Oh, I was just making a bit of the Chinatown. Chinatown reference. joke. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. This is a remake of Notorious. The Alfred Hitchcock movie. The second. Yeah, Mission Impossible 2 is yes, a remake. That's oh. a really good story. You're totally right. Huh. Like an openly admitted Robert Town was like, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to remake Notorious. You're right. <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about Mission Impossible but 2. I, but I guess, uh, in a way, like I guess maybe the, the reason I put the Mission Impossible 3 is a little bit higher up than you guys is that it was such a like beyond letdown, the second one, yeah. Yeah. that they're bringing in this guy who's like a you know, has written many scripts in Hollywood for features mm-hmm. like Harrison for Harrison Ford and Felicity. Oh, like that's right. This TV Mel dude, Gibson. and and he did uh, regarding Hen- Henry I and think. Forever Young and Forever Young, and so it's like this boy wizard. And he's young kn- too. He's young when he makes at, this at that movie. point. He's super young. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's still and he, young, and he's still like <laughs> boyish. Abrams, he's like a, like uh, Dick Clark. Um, and he, they entrust him in this franchise, and he knows TV well. He's yeah. clearly like a fan, right? And so I like the fact that, you know, we'll go into it, but the fact that he brings it back to somewhat for me, Mission Impossible One territory, which is these yeah. are human beings. Yeah, this isn't like I'm jumping from a bike and kicking your ass in midair. Yeah, like Mission it's Impossible not, Two. It, it has teams. It has a team as opposed to two, which is like a lone wolf. And they put him with like not like oh I'm. With a with a citizen with a pri- you know like a yeah. mortal like right. uh, this love interest which you know right. I don't think it's effective throughout the movie it's very clunky when they shoehorn that into it yeah um, but I think it's at least I like the fact that they bring it down to like oh what does a mi six you know or whatever or mif 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 
And I didn't know it was like Impossible Mission Force or something. I know, yeah. Which is so awkward. Why did they? And not only that, because the anagram also is like there's already is an IMF. And yeah, it's, right. And it's, and it's terrible. Like the yeah. International when Monetary you know Fund. It's great. And What's wrong it's with the well, IMF? but it, but it's Wait, funny. What? It's funny because I kept trying to like make like allegorical connections between like oh the fuck, actual right. IMF and have this a, IMF. We'll get. I want to just to talk about the movie. I want to summarize the movie. But I, I have a. I, there's a scene of politics in this movie that I want to talk. Oh, about. there is. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Is that the Billy Crudup thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But going back to also what Jose was saying, yeah. this film is definitely very interesting as like a film that feels like a transition in the franchise. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it is very much also like establishes, I think, the visual um, dynamic or mm-hmm. let's say the visual style that four, five, and six sort of have, but like a little bit different. Right. But also, this one's a little grittier. This one's a little yeah. grittier. Yes. And this one isn't um, like again. What's really fascinating to me about the first one is that it's not a comic book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yes. this one is a little bit more realistic yeah. than the second one. Yeah. But oh, then by the m- I think it's the most realistic one in the franchise. Well, no, the first the one. first one is the first one. That's true. But with the, first the, the exception one? of the, like the climax. The f- yeah, I was going to say there is a scene where he literally avoids death by helicopter yeah, by a quarter okay. of an inch. This one only has him like jumping off of a building right. and like swinging yeah. in a fulcrum. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's actually not a fulcrum; it's a pendulum. Whatever. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh <And> boy! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you invited me to this party. <laughs> but th- no, this one like, again. Four, five, and six are really over the top. Yeah. Like, with people, that, and that's kind of red meat. People, that's yeah. what you, what you oh, That's what you want. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. you're, well, and cause you're like, an action masterpiece. I think it's fair to say. Because you're like, eventually, yeah. he's My definitely going to kill himself on screen, and I want to be there. I right. want to see it. I want right. to see it captured. And put it on screen. Right. A la Faces of Doubt. So what happens in Mission Impossible 3, So George? Mission Impossible 3 finds <laughs> Ethan Hunt. In love. In, in love. <laughs> oh, in love. He's in love. He's in love. He, he loves, loves her so. Oh, oh my God. God. Kiss me. Kiss me, Jules. <laughs> so um, we find him edit, in Domestic note, Bliss edit. with <laughs> Julia, as Michelle played by Monaghan, Michelle Monaghan. The yeah. underutilized part of this entire franchise. And we'll talk about her, too, because yeah. I feel like at the end, I feel like they were right. I feel like the script was done. And they were like, "Oh shit, we, d- we didn't give her anything to do. Let's completely rewrite the ending <laughs> and refilm yeah. it, refilm it right now." Yeah. Um, so we find Ethan Hunt in Domestic Bliss, right? With but Julia, um, and he's obviously lying to her. He says that he works. And it's with like the somewhat of an engagement of transfer- party, right? Yeah, and because again, like the an engagement longest party. engagement party yeah. ever yeah. captured to sell cellu- to digital celluloid. <laughs> and he's quickly, um, maybe celluloid. He's quickly called back to action because yeah. one of his former uh, proteges, as played by Carrie Russell, whose yeah. name is Lindsay. Right. Um, has been captured mm-hmm. who by Owen Davian's men. He's an arms dealer. Yeah, he's an arms of dealer. Questionable origins. And at this point, yeah. we, fi- we find out that, yeah, we don't really find out much about Owen Nothing. Davian, yeah. other than the fact that he's a badass. Yeah. Total badass. That, again, Ethan's kind of only been training. He's not a field agent anymore, but he goes back into the field to save Carrie Russell. He is not able to save her. She tragically, tragically dies. And basically, the rest of the film is him trying to get a semblance of revenge for her death and he goes after and that includes Davian and this uh, obviously kind sorry, of complicates I, his relationship with it's, it's okay um, it complicates his relationship with obviously Julia who eventually is abducted by Owen Davian Owen, Owen Davian yeah. and, and he has to rescue her his boss played by Billy Crudup spoiler Crudo. alert yeah. the movie is almost 20 years old yeah yeah <laughs> Um, but we initially think that it's, it's Lawrence Fishburne. It's Lawrence and I would say that this movie sets in it sets it's a transition between the other films. Yeah. But it also sets the stage for the later Mission Impossible mm-hmm. insane set pieces yeah. with the um Vatican heist. The yeah. Vatican heist, which yeah. I want to talk about, yes. but also the pendulum, not fulcrum <laughs> swing, uh, swing, and, and the. But then it. But then the the last bits <coughs> of the film are much more of like a gritty action film. And what's the exactly. and there's another previous. Isn't there one other previous sort of like crazy stunt? Well, well it's, yeah, it's on the, on Lindsay's re- or uh, Virginia her Beat. rescue, her rescue. Then it's um, so there's the rescue, then Vatican, the Vatican. But there's no crazy. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I think, and then it's the Vatican, and then it's the Chesa- when when they when they uh, when they take Davian away. On that is a, that is a that's maybe the best sequence it's in I the agree. film. I think it's, it's like because it has really clear the choreography, and, and yeah. you're not necessarily expecting it unless if you don't see the trailers for this. Like it's, I think it's somewhat of a, a refreshing and that shot s- of shift the missile hitting him and him getting thrown yeah. against the car is that's like cool. the iconic image. From this from movie, this, yeah. I feel like, and yeah. I definitely think he did that. Oh yeah, oh, for he sure. took yeah, that yeah. hit, and the yeah. jumps, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then it's and then it's like when he goes to Asia, Shanghai, uh, Shanghai. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you guys like this it. movie? Well, I, I, I mean, 
rewatching it, I was once again like pleasantly surprised that like the groundedness is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree that it's it's so uh, unfortunate that the whole dynamic between him and her and Julia like doesn't really go anywhere. Right. Um, and I mean, I'll say, and I'll say this. I mean, going back to my point about like feeling like, oh, shit might happen. Like, really, mm-hmm. d- there are stakes here. I love, even though it's uh, it's very deceiving at the beginning. Like, I remember watching it in the theater, being like, first of all, like Phil Seymour Hoffman is terrifying, and then oh my god, he killed. And we don't know Julia. It's at a that great point. opening that cold. And open. we don't know Julia, uh, but clearly they're in a relationship, and he kills her in front of him, and so. Just in terms of like the filmmaking trickery, I uh, I like that. Even though I'm I I get really I'm getting really kind of tired of the whole masks thing, which mm-hmm. is like such a trite yeah. thing that that I'm glad Fallout d- still does a little bit, but they kind of call it out. They subverted a little. They bit subverted too. like that scene well, in the bathroom. The, what the, I kept thinking about the mask is like I don't like it's so fucking why why the need to do this elaborate break and thing to the Vatican when he could just make like a pope mask and walk right in. <laughs> Like, yeah. like seriously, just like make a That's mask a really, yeah. and just like walk right through the door and be like, "Hey, you I'm the can, Pope." And then, or or even better, make a mask of the guy who's head of fucking security. Yeah, yeah. And like abduct that guy the previous night at his home yeah. and just knock him out for twelve hours yeah. and then do the whole fucking thing and just yeah. walk right in and turn off all the cameras. The, yeah. That sequence has some problems, but that would be mission difficult, not <laughs> mission impossible. And That's as true. Jose has previously <laughs> yeah. pointed out. Well, I, why does he have so many different bosses? I mean, in the first one, the guy's a bad guy. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins just disappears. Yeah. In the second one, yeah. it's a just glorified cameo. But they it do that. I guess they did with the third one. It's th- nobody but fourth, like Tom Wilkinson. They always have like uh, Tom Alec Baldwin. He brought back Alec Baldwin though. Alec yeah. Baldwin's and then come they back. killed him. Yeah. Well, and you know, one thing that like we're all over the place with this, but I feel like this is our opportunity to talk about Mission Impossible, and yeah. that's great. But one thing that I think that as much as I love Fallout that the series is now losing Mm -hmm. is the sense of experimentation between the chapters because Mm -hmm. the first one is such a De Palma movie. Yeah. Like to its core, it opens with this shot of camera footage and then it's yeah. revealed that someone's watching and yeah. like there's a perversion to it mm-hmm. that's really interesting and like there's a there's like a sexual charge to it that yeah. isn't that like like he has sex in that movie tom cruise the <laughs> sex like with what's with john Voight's wife like it's fucked up and oh, weird. right yeah, yeah well she also starts like, like kissing his hand i think yeah, yeah, and you see like this pain Man, but like this desire and yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all and then the second one is such a it's a John Woo parody but it's a John Woo and movie. there's like banter between them but n- I mean no, no real yeah like more like romantic yeah, yeah that's and true sens- and you know and the second one like they, they and now with McQuarrion who I think is really good yeah. but he's directing the next two which, which where be, do you go from here I'll be the first question. one I'll be the first one in the theater yeah but really it could have ended with six Absolutely. I mean it could have ended with four it could have ended well with it could five. always end yeah the, yeah there's no real dark like, yeah I mean well I mean in the sense that you know is there any like finale it yeah. seems like the the there's clearly obviously um, consequences and things get carried over and whatnot. Right. It seems like the later ones are doing like interesting things with like the apostles, where they're kind of right. building I up like these that like there enemies. is almost like a like a uh, like what's like an organization or, or universe. That, the, yeah, the James yeah. Bondville. Yeah, what yeah. did you think of it, George? This, this one. Yeah. Um, well, I thought okay. So going back to what Jose was saying, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed it because I remember obviously like it's low in my rankings, mm-hmm. um, and there were a lot of things about it. I was like, oh, this isn't like that good. Um, but yeah, I would just remember like, or remember, cause I literally just started earlier today. I was pleasantly surprised how much yeah. I enjoyed it, yeah. but also maybe I didn't like it because I did when I did uh, see it actually mm. even for the first time, I watched them all in a row to prepare for fallout. And I think yeah. maybe just watching them like back to back to back to back to back to back. If I got that right. Yeah. About yeah. to back. Um, to back to back to back. Yeah. <laughs> like this one definitely like the first one's great because it's actually like a film. Yeah, and as exactly. I said earlier, yeah. not well, a comic what book. What the hell does that mean? They're all <laughs> films. No, again, dude, he's not fucking jumping off like high yeah. rises in Shanghai. Yeah, like, like, come on. Like that so doesn't mean it's not a film, though. I don't no, understand what uh, you're saying. I mean, he's not like it's putting not on the Infinity piece, Gauntlet. Piece, yeah, piece. yeah. So he's not putting on There's the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. And See, this is the, a su- 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 thesis supporting the, details. What I'm saying, in the first one, the Thetans, the Thetans are definitely like being withheld within. And in the in the other ones, he's clearly expelling the Thetans, and he's like. Fuck this! It's, I'm it's level more of a film because there's like there's I, more I'm consequence. Trying ex- I'm trying to explain them. I don't. Your Scientology, Scientology garbage is not. <laughs> 
Liam joined the church a couple of months ago, he's and, every, and, and every yeah, every time we bring up Scientology, he's like, he's like, there's good things about the church, all right? <laughs> there's good things about it. Edit it no, edit. I just mean in the sense that yeah, it's not over the top. Yeah, I, and just yeah. simply so action set pieces. Can't be over the top. No, we can. <laughs> that one is. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say I didn't enjoy. My of me tapping four, five, and six for an appropriate yeah. response. But Jose knows what I'm getting at. Like I like. Uh, there's that sequence that I. I think I saw the first one like three times in the theater. Like oh, people, man. my my dad dragged me, then my uncle my uncle dragged me or took me, or like I dragged him maybe. Um, it's that a pretty scene, great movie, especially w- when you're like a twelve year old. However, I was because it's and you feel like oh this is yeah. what adults like. It was a big movie. Yeah, and that scene where. He, he like they think he thinks Phelps Jim Phelps is dead John yeah. Boyd yeah. and then he discovers him and they're having a conversation and the con- the the disconnect between what he's saying and then you see how he orchestrated everything and he yeah. killed yeah. all of them. It's actually great filmmaking. Ugh. it is really good filmmaking and, and that that does and it's th- creepy yeah. too like yeah. that score and like yeah f- uh, Kristen Scott Thomas being killed by Jean Reno in that first movie. <laughs> Is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, there's always a good cast. Like, they good always good job, have. like bringing Except around for Henry like. Cavill. <laughs> boo, <laughs> boo, boo. <laughs> um, I like this one. I don't love it. I don't think the romantic thing works. Oh, the romantic I think thing Tom is Cam- awful. Tom Cam- Tom Tom Chemistry. Tom Chemistry. Tom Cat. I think Tom. The old one. Tom Cruise <laughs> of course, has, definitely has uh, absolutely no sexual uh, quality. There's nothing sexual about him as a person. It's like. Like he uh, just doesn't no, I don't think it, any sexuality. I've I think he seen. did back. I mean, yeah, no, like, I think, yeah, he For does in Magnolia. Eyes wide well, shut. even in the old one. I mean, yeah, yeah, and even in like you know, the firm and I mean, yeah, the firm. That's true. He had that, but movies were like not to be like, Ew, but like it was things were a little different in terms of how you made that kind of stuff. Then I don't right. know. He doesn't. He's just so like and asexual. Well, and I think now he need he. It feels like forced because we all know we, there's that. Entire right. baggage of who he is, what he believes, like the people that he yeah. dates, that he like that scene. I think when when he marries Julia, and then there has to be a scene of them like going to the closet and like taking their clothes yeah, out. Like such an awkward. <laughs> why? Yeah. Well, also the scene later on when he has like the flashback, right? Do I, am I, am I, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's he's he's oh. like falling asleep, and there's this like yeah, the scene these, of them like these, making these, out, like, cross dissolved yes, fades yes. that like. And they're gorgeous mm. people. They're beautiful people. It's and great, the illusion, it's great to watch. I don't they're alluding I don't, Tom that he had a thing with her, with uh, Terry Russell, yes. right? Yes, which is interesting, too. Which also is like a very De Palma thing, too, where Ving Rhames is like, oh, so right, you tell exactly. me, like, where he says, like, oh, would God you bless fuck your Ving si- Rhames in these movies. Like, the, 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 like, I like how the, like, the incest is totally raised in this film. It's like, what, you didn't, like, so you're telling me you didn't sleep with your sister? Like, what, yeah. like, what kind of line yeah. of dialogue is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think any of that stuff works. And I think no. as a result, like, this, I, I actually give this movie it credit. It doesn't work. For trying very hard to create like an emotional core to this character, but yeah. I think they all learned very wisely that after this movie, that Ethan Hunt had to become a machine. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. And as a machine, he's like the movies are much much more entertaining, and right. I think Tom Cruise knows that, and he gives them enough humanity. I actually think you, l- my favorite scene in this entire franchise, in and the thing that I think makes Mission Impossible Fallout such a good movie. And I mean this quite seriously, and we're not talking about Mission Impossible yeah. Fallout, but whatever, is that there is a lot of consequence in Mission Impossible Fallout to the actions that yes. he takes. And one of the best parts in the entire movie is when they're trying to get that car and the French c- woman, yeah, the French cop yeah. is there. Such a unique moment. Like oh, yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the kind of gate the pulls gate up comes or whatever. Up yeah. and she tries to stop yeah. them and he looks and he's like, he talks to her. Yeah. And you realize that like what's great about the movies is that it's all. It, it stops being about him personally and stops being about him valuing one life over all these lives. Right. And like, it's the most telling thing in the entire franchise. Yeah. That and scene. at the end, when he's trying to get when like to stop save, Julia, yeah. and save save an entire like country. everybody. Yeah, and like it's or just region. it's like it yeah. it makes the character much more interesting because like trying to it give does. him a personal grounding. Right. Although those are also the scenes where I'm always like, should we really think like the, the, the CIA? I mean, obviously they're not yeah, CIA. Right, but like right. The CIA operative is a really good guy. Well, yeah. yeah. And then given this chance, this guy wouldn't just fucking absolutely murk this woman to get to like to, get yeah. to do the mission. Like <laughs> yeah. he totally would. Yeah, yeah. well, sure. But, <laughs> but, still, but I think that what's interesting yeah. about the movies is that, and I think this is worth discussing in terms of the politics of the films, yeah. that like the conflict in him is, do I, do I value my personal life over my professional life? Yes. And that is an interesting thing. And this movie fails for me in most ways this in trying one. to deal with yeah. it. Totally, yeah. Um, because it tries so hard to deal with it. Yeah. 
And it's like they brought J.J. Abrams in to be like the soulful director. Right. And it all falls flat. And I think most of it falls flat because I don't think Tom Cruise wears it. Right. Very well. But then, and so maybe bringing in Philip Seymour. Yes. I do like, I mean, so Philip, you see, Philip. you see John Voight in the first one. I think he's, well, I'll say this. I think Philip Seymour is the best villain of the entire franchise. Mm. Uh, yes. yes. I'll say that. Yeah. Because again, four and five, I couldn't tell you. Like, it's like it's that guy from villain. who comes back to the six when he's already arrested. Right. Yeah. Right? Well, the f- yeah, uh, five and six sh- have the that same. I- is that actor's name? Yeah, um, that he's that a great actor. He's like Scott. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Four, I, I couldn't and then tell the, you the, the villain is. Four is like they have like uh, Leila Sidu is one of the villains. There's like a fight scene. Yes. But then I can yeah can tell well, you the other ones. That one's really great because it's like a ridiculous, but it's not it's not it's like set pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and like the the way it opens with them all getting disavowed is right. the, literally the first movie. It's the same plot. Yeah, as the first which is like movie. it's it's a you know kind of dramatically yeah. inherently dramatic, but but yeah. So first one, John Boyd. You know, you I mean maybe you're seeing that from a mile away. Even though I think Jim Phelps was never never betrayed he was like uh, in the series he yeah, was yeah. Like, no, he was like, he was like ethan yeah, hunt yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess well it's one Maybe. of the smart things they did with the movie is they took this they character from it. the original and they subverted it a little to, bit to which i think like is a, a de palma like very yeah. a de palma david cope move that right was, that's very oh like, david cope, right i think he wrote it yeah right. um and so i think the th- with philip seymour i like the fact that it is it is basically he comes at it with like this kind of he's this brilliant overweight like nerd but br- like, like you don't want to cross him because he he's is a psycho. He's, yeah. a, he's two steps ahead of you, right? And you know his, you know the fact that it, he doesn't have a lot of screen time, but he just uses twenty he, minutes. Of he makes it. Time. He uses it well. He mileage takes, you know, gets a lot of mileage out of right. it. And how he connects the whole thing of how he threatens him in the on the plane, and then the very and he nature- hears his name, and then he hears, an, but then the fact that Tom Cruise as this machine, as right. this like. Uh, blunt instrument kind of carries him opens the 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 whatever the op- the, the the thing in the bot like the, the yeah, yeah, yeah the gate the, or whatever the, the bay most, doors yeah the cargo the doors in the entire it movie. is yeah and the, and but then like at the end when he's kicking he's like you know or shouldn't have done that or or he brings it back also say like you remember i told you i'm gonna kill you in front of her yeah so it's he doesn't he he, he holds grudges and he's right. like both human uh, I mean, he's psychotic, yes, but it, he has an emotion of like, don't embarrass me, yeah, which I like. He's like, really, I mean, I think it's the best thing about the his. He's the best thing about the entire 100%, film, like 100%. hands down. Yes, and to contextualize it within, one of the reasons he's the best thing about it is because it's a wildly unpredictable performance. Yeah, but there's not a lot of theatrics to it, like. I think a lot about the o- like so the opening scene in the movie is like a really interesting f- way to think about the uh, the entire movie and mm-hmm. I I wanted to go back and actually watch to think about them in terms of their opposites I wanted to go back and watch their scenes in Magnolia yes yeah. oh Magnolia oh but right. I didn't get a chance just to see like because uh, from what I understand Tom Cruise was like get Phil Hoffman oh really for this movie huh. I want Phil Hoffman to be in this for movie. Mission Possible but can you think of a more different performance but than his role well, as uh, Phil yeah. the uh, the caretaker yeah, yeah. in Magnolia and this film yeah, I was, there's like five six seven years between these two <laughs> movies yeah. I do love that I do love that <laughs> se- that sequence where obviously they like he puts on the Philip Seymour Hoffman oh mask great special effects by the way in that yeah. mask, it's actually in that, masking yeah. yeah but also like that one scene where like obviously Philip Seymour Hoffman has to like act like Tom Cruise oh, it's so <laughs> he's good. like crawling through like the, the yeah, docks yeah, and, like yeah, jumping yeah. around for like a hot minute yeah. it's like amazing amazing it's a really great sequence it's like a 360 shot where, where like again J.J. Abrams shoehorning the the relationship aspect of it, Luther Stickle, Bing Rames talking to Ethan, right. like, you, you uh, do you know this girl? Do like, really commitment, like blah, blah, blah. And they're, at the same time, he's putting on the Philip Seymour Hoffman mask and it looks really great and effectively, like, practical and realistic. Right. And then, and then when it lands, like, it's already clearly Philip Seymour Hoffman with Tom Cruise's voice. And he says, Luther. We got married yesterday, and then Luther's like, "Congratulations!" And then you see that <laughs> yeah, that's Phyllis Seymour Hoffman smirk yeah. and smile, yeah. and right. pats him on the back like, "Good, great, yeah, yeah. thank you, good, 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 good. good. It's um, so good, yeah. It is really good, and he gets it's fun as we just talked about. Like, yeah. we, it Phyllis Seymour Hoffman gets to play around a little bit with like being not like a, a sociopath for a few minutes. He's like cool and like a super agent yeah. when he's 
Tom Cruise. And it's just so funny because he would never in real life be granted that opportunity. Right. Like, totally, he's just not yeah. the, Until a most wanted man when he plays right. a secret agent. Oh, right. But in this like very, Steve very... Spoilers, I mean, dude. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's really fucking yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like that, that the very beginning of this myth movie... You have the, the the scene that comes later in the film, right? And he's like, "Where's the rabbit's foot?" Right, yeah. which is like, I look, I, such I, a I gotta give this too. movie such a, it's such, it's so great that it's called the rabbit's foot. Yeah, like it's really smart. Well, I think it's also great that you never find out what it is. Right. Where's the rabbit's foot? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh fuck you! And it doesn't um, sound like <laughs> dangerous. It, it doesn't sound dangerous, right. but I just Lord. love how like it's such an interesting thing to think about. Like, because Tom Cruise is like. Uh, you know, like he's on the record as having ADHD and curing his ADHD through Scientology, right? Yeah. And his performance in the scene, he's all over the place. He can't focus. And like yeah. part of his per- is intentional, but part of it, I think, is just Tom Cruise energy. Like yeah. I bet Tom Cruise in real life is just like hard to pin down. Yeah. And it keeps cutting to this, these reverses of Phillips mm-hmm. right. often. Right. Oh, you mean like the and he's really and he even looks like teary eyed. He's like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of intensity in, in him. And yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, you mean Phil? Yeah, 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 Phil, yeah, he's yeah, just, yeah. But he's so present in it. Yeah. And what is amazing to me about that is how still he is. <laughs> like he's Completely. got a gun on her. Yeah. And, and then, then he, he just has her. that reaction, like you don't think I'll do it. Yeah. But otherwise, like. Although, can we also backtrack and say, like, I do feel two things when he's being first being interrogated on the plane, and the first thing he says to him is like, "Do you have a wife? Do you yeah. have a girl?" Oh, like, yeah. so first good. of all, why? Well, yes, but it's also really stupid. That's like the first thing he says to him. Yeah. Like, why? Is this? No. Do, that's do you have a that... mom? Do you have a dad? Do you have a dog? Perhaps that you really really <laughs> like in your life. Do, I, I don't mean to assume, but do you have a wife? Maybe. Uh, maybe well, okay. Maybe so you have all, a husband. All, I don't want to assume. Say, I don't mean to assume. <laughs> no, I know what I'm saying. Is that what I'm saying is like is like the first thing he says. It's like so like writing like. You know, built like yeah, yeah. Like you just watched forty five minutes of Ethan Hunt, like count, like like. Can I do this? Am I really in love with this woman? Yes, I am. But right. I have this double life. And then what I'm saying is like the first he, thing yeah. he says to him That's is like, so you feel away. like it's overly written. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And I, also that yeah. it takes him five seconds to figure out who Ethan Hunt is and to figure out all these details about him. Right. He gets because they save him from the bridge, and right. then like literally like five, like a minute, not even a minute later, he calls. His oh, right. house, and he's and like, then, uh, "Is Julia there?" And then they, the guy, kind of takes yeah, her out. And the guy's yeah. like already there. All I'm yeah. just saying is like those like jumps are yeah. really. You're kind right. Of, I'm yeah. really yeah. concerned like about badly. these things when I watch <laughs> yeah. Mission Impossible Three. No, but I think that what to your oh, point. Oh, but these are films. But I do yeah. to your point. I think that a lot of the film feels really manufactured. Yes. Yeah. And oh, the yeah. only element of right. it that feels dangerous is him. Is, is Phil him. Hoffman without question? Hundred percent. And yeah. it's, I mean. Fuck. And especially to think about it in relationship. So one thing I like to do on the show is think about, like, what are the other Phil Hoffman f- performances that you can see in this? Like, Ooh. what are the things he did before and to some extent after? And I can see a little bit of his coughing in the bathroom with the coughing in oh. Oh, came Polly. Oh, that's <laughs> wait, really? <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean with the mm, yeah, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> when he's trying to stall uh, because the yeah, voice is yeah, that's true. Wow, that's really true. That's a good. Yeah. Well, so that's I was thinking pull. about that, and I was also thinking. Th- so when he goes, so there's the scene where there's the Vatican heist, and Maggie Q, yeah. spills wine on him. <laughs> More like he, cutie, right? uh, yeah, Maggie <laughs> Cutie, <laughs> and he she, he goes to the bathroom, and he has this like very brief moment where he kind of like goes like he like puts his stuff down and just pauses. Yeah, yeah. It's so brief, but yeah. it's like. This is like a fully realized. Yeah. Nothing uh, happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's just also his suit doesn't fit. I think that that's <laughs> right. really specific so. and smart. I like, do love the when she spells a wine on him and he says yeah. something like, "Oh, I, I don't mind people spelling wine yeah, yeah. on my like custom fitted yeah. <laughs> designer shirt." Or before when he grabs like a first shot, you see oh, him yes. and he yeah, just yeah. like very awkwardly clunkily grabs yeah, yeah. like a drink from the tray. Oh, yeah. it's and so he good. keeps walking because like I don't give a really shit. We haven't really had that experience of him at all. He's so so. Yeah, I think that's his first scene in the film besides the opening, right? Like that's the first time you see him. Is yeah. You yeah. see in photos and that's it. Yeah. 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 But it's like you can see. So a couple of f- I can see some Freddie Lowndes from Red Dragon in this yeah. performance. That little bit of like, oh, fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's so like there's only a few people that can pull that off. That mm-hmm. kind of like I'm a super. Well, uh, yeah. Don't fuck it. I yeah. thought of Love Lisa yeah. because of like the edge of madness kind of thing that's got Ooh. going here. Do you Obviously. Think he's got, you think he has like an edge of madness thing going? Well, yeah, of course. In this film. Yeah. Why? Because well, I think he's pretty in control. No, well, I mean, yes, but also in the sense that he could at any given moment like fly off the like handle. Snap, yeah. Well, like you find that also that he just like fucking killed his like translator. Obviously, you don't find that until much later, right? But then, like, he sacrificed his translator because she like fucked up. So there right. is this kind of sense of like again, there's this, um, which feels a little shoehorned into the totally, movie. Totally, yeah. Right. yeah. But this kind of villainous quality to him, right? 
in which he could at any given moment like just do something completely crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's true. Although I do, th- I do also think though, and that unfortunately his character is a bit underwritten, mm-hmm. which again I guess all these villains are. But he does do a great job. Of fleshing what do you, what out, do you th- like, because he has no motivation or backstory. Well, no or motivation. You don't really find out what the it's a Norm Zulu period. Yeah, and you don't know, right? And he's just kind of like, yeah. it, he's I like the, the idea that at the very end of the movie, <laughs> it like fades to black and then it comes back up, and this little girl's like, "Where's Teddy?" <laughs> it's like Teddy got his head cut off yeah. by a truck in yeah. Shanghai. Oh, he actually did his own death. stunt for that. You know, you really? Know? Yeah, much like Tom Cruise. So no, he didn't. <laughs> That'd be amazing. So yeah, I spent three months in the, in the hospital afterwards. It was totally worth it. There's a lot of Freddie Lowndes in this, and there's a lot like it's, and there's I think there's a little bit of. Lancaster Dodd from the master in this Ooh, that kind yeah. of like that makes sense yeah. and like a little bit of the and you haven't seen the it control. like his car- is like the doggedness of Gunther and most wanted man like it's mm. interesting to think about how these like previous performances yeah. and again it's like one of the things that Philip Seymour Hoffman excels at is being a confident guy that generally wouldn't al- be allowed to be confident. Yeah, when he when he flirts with obviously as Tom Cruise, ugh, oh yeah, she, and the tr- the tran- the assistant is translating and. Yes, she does a good job because it feels like, oh, I've done this stupid, stupid like tra- translating before for this yeah, yeah, sociopath yeah. when he flirts with the women. But he's like, what are we gonna do when my clothes and are it's being? So it's yeah. smooth, it's yeah. smooth as smooth as hell. You believe it, yeah. and the problem is that we're supposed to believe it's Tom Cruise. Which, like, if right. oh, I see what you're saying, you know, yeah. he's sexier yeah. than Tom Cruise, but, but he, Philip he, Seymour, but Hoffman Philip Seymour Hoffman does a great sexy. job yeah. of being acting like yeah. Tom Cruise no, it's, would act. It's, it's, yeah. it's really, really yeah. good. Like, because he, he's that smiling like Tom Cruise, right? He's like Smurfy. he has that dopey face that Philip Seymour Hoffman has in movies, right? And being but very innocent to Maggie Q, and she's like, oh, we'll we'll figure something yeah, out. Yeah, and yeah. They walk away together. So yeah. maybe speaking about Maggie Q, we could also talk about like what this film does or doesn't do with the rest of the yeah. women. Because yeah. right. this is also wait, like, are we done with Phil? Really? Oh no, sorry. No, no, the no, show yeah. is about Phil. Huh? Go back to Phil. I thought it was about us <gasps> and the journey <gasps> we're on, oh, and that Phil is, is just an excuse. For us to bond and to make friends. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it is. And to drink mm-hmm. some I mean, bourbon I think and that's good all wine. True. But this film, yeah, it really disappointed me in terms of Wait, like, are you drinking bourbon? No, wine. No, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it really disappointed the only one. It really disappointed me in terms of what it does with its women. Because yeah. again, Carrie Russell and I think Maggie Q. I yeah. think you guys are r- I think you guys are right, like and I didn't think about this before, but it gives the film a certain kind of stakes where it introduces a character that you think is gonna be pivotal and then right. kills her like very, very early on. She does some shooting though. So yeah, she does some cool yeah, ass shooting. She's badass, that gun flip is awesome. Yeah, gun flip. It. You can find it on our Twitter feed. Oh, yeah, oh, where he the flips her the gun and then yeah. she grabs it, and, and then like, she grabs it and in then she keeps yeah, shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so having seen this movie recently, I, I sort of skipped through some bits because uh, <laughs> I, I'd seen it, again. I'd seen it. Um, but I do think that Carrie, like I would, I would watch a, a Mission Impossible like adjacent film right. starring Carrie. Russell. Well, there's a, better. There's a TV show called The Americans about seven oh, seasons. Oh, I haven't of seen it. it. You watch it. Yeah, yeah it's fucking it. amazing. But going back, so like I saw her in a bike she, in Brooklyn Heights. She's one. yeah, she's all over Brooklyn. She's uh, she's given very little screen time, and also yeah. like her death is used cynically as like motivation. Mm-hmm. To obviously propel him on his journey, right? Maggie Q does fucking nothing. nothing in this. She's given that like one scene where her characters they attempt to like flesh out her character, where she's in the she's praying, she's in the car, yeah, and she's praying, yeah, right. And then at the very end with uh, Julia, yeah, where obviously like he electrocutes himself to deactivate right. the bomb in his head, right? But that to me, f- I mean, I'm glad they give her something to do because she also like fucking kills some guys and yeah. she kills Billy yeah. Crudup. Right. But also, I felt like that was so like shoehorned in there. Yeah. Like, oh shit, we got to have her do something. Let her be the one that like saves him. And it just felt to me like it was a li- little bit forced. Yeah. Well, you don't spend any time with her as a character. Correct. With yeah, Ma- yeah no, Maggie. I, Ma- I mean, uh, Michelle Monaghan. Yeah. Oh, yeah no. Know. And then and then you would think that in this movie where you're introducing this backstory to Ethan Hunt, why he fell in love with her, and blah blah blah, that she would yeah. anchor m- a lot of the story, and then. Four, five, six. Whenever she's in, and six at the end, like barely even she's less. She's in a shot of four at the very at the end, end. And, and then, then six, obviously, and then she's six. Like yeah. She's there with the bad guy from American Beauty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's why also a little. I disagree with a little bit what you were saying earlier about how the the later films d- like do away with him as a human being. Yeah. Because obviously, well, then in, like, I, com- I con- contrasted that yeah. with my very clear. Well, because <laughs> they also bring in like. Uh, What's her last name is Ferguson. What's her first oh, name? Oh, Rebecca. 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 Just, yeah. They killed it with that. She's so they amazing. definitely improved. She's amazing, but clearly yeah. also she's there as like for the sexual like tension, right. potential. Yeah, like, but I think that know, that's selling interest. a little bit short because I think that she's like the most formidable character the franchise has produced that's not, that's not, not Tom Ethan. Cruise. Yeah. Well, Ving, yeah. I would say Ving Rhames. 
Uh, but in I mean, terms Forbes of like, kind I guess, of the goofy side. Oh yeah, yeah. but in yeah. okay, Forbes Actually, Simon Pegg like, is the goofy side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You mean in terms of like threatening like, or like and like like um badass. physical performance yeah and okay yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah i agree yeah, I sure so. yeah um, and she might actually be the future of the franchise let's hope so yeah i'll be great mm, i don't think tom no. Cruise gives this up no no i mean he's eventually because she's this is also i think weird he's 56 she's 29 no she's, she's that young she's, she's like probably in her 30s she has maybe to be. she's yeah. maybe okay so maybe she's 30 something yeah. is, but there, is there a database of information that we could look up there that if might only tell there us were a database a d- some kind <laughs> in an internet for movies <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no. maybe like an internet movie she's 35 database. she's 35 uh, okay yeah. but still yeah. he's 56 yeah, yeah. You and guys. He, i mean he, no yeah, definitely OC. age inappropriate yes right. <laughs> yeah. although he's still hunky yeah. No, but he's not. He looks like a. Come on. Uh, he <laughs> Come looks like he has really bad dry skin. And I like Liam's good. like, fuck that guy. He's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I will see every. Tom Cruise to me is the least problematic famous person, even though he's yeah. very yeah. problematic. Like, yeah. uh, take him over uh, Quentin Tarantino, yeah. for example. Or like well, to definitely in the looks department, by oh, the way. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino looks like a Dick Tracy villain. Without question. He <laughs> does. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Shit. Um. No, I think that the movie has a. I don't know if it is a woman problem, but it, it definitely undervalues no. the women. Yeah, it's yeah. not misogynistic, yeah. but it's no, it's not. Um, when it, and everything is like, what does commitment look like to him? It's all, yes. it's all, it's all like, it's the Ethan Hunt show, obviously the entire right. movie, but it's it's like his coworkers. Com- and like the does isn't the ending literally like a fade out them like walking them yeah. in the back like Luther yeah. like Ving Rhames doing like a silly like you the yeah. man <laughs> and then and then like fade out and they're like hand in hand like what yeah that's true it's all like in relation to Ethan like yes. is this woman worth it to leave this bus- this this life behind that that. It, and the then conversation the, the, the revolves next around movie that. movie kind of doesn't really address it as well as it could because there's totally, the movie with yeah. Jeremy Renner who's like, oh right, she's dead, yeah. but she's not dead. So he faked her death in order to protect, to protect her. her yeah, yeah. So and all this stupid. Other stuff. Yeah, but I still but think Ghost Protocol is like a really good. That's a fortunate Yeah, that's nice. Right. Really good. Except I think that I think that that's a funny example. Speaking of women, I feel like. If you think I'm back on that movie, it's like, oh yeah, Paula Patton, who's a fucking badass. Oh, yeah, I forgot about is Paul in Patton. that movie. Why isn't it Maggie Q? Yeah. Like it would have been right. so yeah, good like if, and it yeah. if they brought back Jonathan Rhys Meyers and Maggie. Oh, they brought Q, him right back, right? Uh, in that one, in the fourth? did they bring him? Back? It, no, it's um, it's Renner. Oh right, right. Yeah, right, right. Jer- Jonathan gotcha. Rhys Meyers doesn't come back, which right. is a little disappointing because like yeah. he's not a huge part of this movie, but he has like an interesting kind of. Because I think it was right after Match Point, this oh. third one. Oh my so God, I, I Match Point. I'm pretty it. sure it was like he's pretty good in Match Point. He's great yeah. in Match Point. Yeah, I love that. I lo- did love that scene though. Where they're, they're, it's they're kind pretend- of a terrible movie. They pretend like to be the um, like the uh, the DHL like. Uh, oh, the Italian. Yeah, the Italian yeah, guy yeah. has to like break down the fight. I'd be kind of offended by that scene though, right? But I'm pretty sure. I'm sure. Maybe no, but, no, but they're actually speaking Italian. Maybe here. Jonathan has a not. better <laughs> accent than, no, yeah, than no, Tom he, Cruise. I think for he sure. actually speaks, speaks Italian. Italian. Yeah. Like it's very, whereas Tom Cruise is like, what language but, do I have to but go yeah. for this But go, one? going back to like... Which thetans do I have to engage? <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Hunt's... Oh, yeah, like, let me let me check the Italian thetans and uh, get him like... <laughs> actually, but yeah, are, are you... Are thetans, but I don't think thetans are your friends, right? I don't know anything I thought, about fucking science. I thought theme, I thought you're supposed to get rid of the fiends. Should we pause the episode? Can and I go watch get my South Park? Well, can, can I get my copy of Dianetics off the shelf? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but um, so I was like, would you like a stress test? <laughs> while you're here? Yeah, please. <laughs> but speaking, go, <laughs> going back to his relationship with uh, Jules. Yeah, Jules, and thinking about, think about like this kind of sense of like Ethan Hunt's monogamy. And I know Jose wanted to say some things about like. Um, this uh, this franchise and relationship to like yes. James Bond, yes, and not James Bond just like always fucking. But you can't imagine Ethan Hunt fucking. Except, I cannot imagine. Except Ethan like the American Hunt flag, because he fucking loves it so goddamn much. Goddamn, I'm a fucked American flag. I'm a fucked American flag. What do you have to say about that American flag? I love you, Ethan. Yeah, you fucking do American flag. I'm a fucked shit out of you. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, I uh, like Jose, that. you wanted to say something I about that. Was the bourbon or George? <laughs> Both. It Let's was the, talk about James it was the rose. No, I think I think it's interesting that yeah, like we people are all fascinated with with like secret agents and Bond is now has now entered this phase where it's ca- catching up with the times, and this la- next one will probably be very different. And then it started with. I like, hope so. I think it will. 
Yeah. Um, I'm excited. The last for it. Dan and Craig, and seems like a, maybe not a new Bond, but a new 007. Well, maybe like a new Bond in ho- many ways is what I'm hoping. Yeah, for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that'd be really nice. Um, and then it started with like Casino Royale, maybe a little bit, and then Skyfall, and um, and so on my end. I actually prefer, as a franchise, I actually still prefer the Bond films, even though they're very mm-hmm. problematic. Yeah. Because that universe, like, it's, it's, they get more, they've been elaborate since the 60s, since right. they started. Um, but I, I love, I just like how elevated it is a lot more in terms of like how exotic it is and, um, romantic. It's romantic. And it's romantic. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, and I like to, f- I want to feel conflicted about Bond. I think it should that's, evolve. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. But and you don't feel conflicted about Ethan Hunt. No, cause yeah. then uh, to, to your point, to our point about not only Ethan Hunt, but Tom Cruise and it can, that can, this can be another conversation for his other recent films but as ethan hunt it is like we're meant to kind of believe that he you know he can do no wrong he he's just the right dose of like moralist moral and like he's a secret agent he probably has to do he's upstanding but he yeah yeah. but he has to do the dirty work but he's conflicted like they just try to make it i long story short i think he's a very boring character i've never really liked Cam, I I don't yeah, go to I yeah. don't go to the movies t- because I want right, to see yeah. right. the evolution of Ethan Hunt. I yeah. go because yeah. of the villain, the missions, um, and because Tom Cruise is doing these stunts, right. but not because there's going to be layers for Ethan right. Hunt. Yeah, that's interesting to think about. That there's very there's a very very thin line that separates like Ethan Hunt from Tom Cruise. Well, <laughs> right. I think that what's a couple right. things that, that you, what you prompt me to think about. First of all, the the best acting that Tom Cruise does in this movie. I mean this quite seriously because I think. I think if there's something that Tom Cruise does really well is he's got energy. Like, he's oh got yeah. energy for days. And there's the scene where he's pretending to really be into traffic signals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's talking <laughs> that's to right. the guy in the that's very in beginning. every J.J. Abrams movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. the very like, beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell everything from how long a traffic... And, like, you believe yes, him. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. so truthful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. that's, in some ways, who Ethan Hunt is. Right. So I feel like what's kind of funny is that I think Tom Cruise has spent most of his career... Right trying to be something that he is not, which is this like super action star kind of right. guy, right. which is fine. Like that's what he aspires to. But I, one of the, th- one thing that I think is very clear to me is that Daniel Craig is an infinitely more interesting actor. Absolutely. That's why. I, yeah. yeah Tom sure. But sure. I think it's worth saying because Daniel Craig also strikes me as one of the most boring human beings. Like, you're not like, what's Daniel Craig doing tonight? No, no. Like, you're... No, but, but he's intense looking. Yeah. He's intense, like, but he, yeah. like, he's kind of just a guy that does these movies and exists as... I think he's one of the best James Bonds of all time. I think he's yeah. phenomenal, oh, yeah. and I think yeah. he made arguably my favorite James Bond film of all time. Well, he's a Lazenby, but I mean... Lazenby is good. Let's not... This is bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit because Lazenby is good. But I think that, like, at the end of the film, at the end of Mission... Imp- at the end of James Bond... With Daniel Craig, you're like, cool, I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, Whereas right. like Tom Cruise wants you to be thinking about Tom Cruise all the time. Yes. Daniel Craig's very Correct. happy yeah. to disappear and go do well, like... Because he's, he's more of an actor. A, 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 yeah, like, yeah. Uh, well, I think that Broadway Tom Cruise is an actor, but, but I think like, yes. he does Broadway, he does, he does like... Broadway, he's doing this new Rian Johnson Lucky. movie that is already my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. Like, he's no, but just... Tom Cruise is in the Tom Cruise business. He's yes. not in like the Mission Impossible business. He's yeah. just in the thing of like, mm-hmm. this is that's the franchise true. that's making... Right. That like promotes me as Tom Cruise. Right. Ergo, I'm gonna continue making these films, and yes, obviously I'll make other films as well. Like there, there are so many films that yeah. he's made where you're like legitimately like he's a good actor. Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, he's really. Yeah. What do you what do you think you're a good Tom Cruise? Well, like a few for? good men. He's great in a few the good firm. men. I recently watched. The firm is really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Really good. Like he can be. The, he, he can has act. A decency in the firm that's really interesting and really challenged, which I think is, is yeah. Really he good. wants to cut corners, but yeah, 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 yeah no, but he's really good. I, I would say to Magnolia too. Magnolia. And He's great in Magnolia. Yeah, born on the fourth of July. Eyes wide shut. Yeah. Um, to JJ's credit, I think that's maybe why he went into this being like, okay, Mission Impossible One. He's like kind of like Cocky leading man. Guy, yeah. Mission Impossible Two. He's now like this like trench coat wearing like motorcycle riding like god or whatever action yeah. star then it's like let's bring him down yeah he's kind of dull let's bring him down and give him like something to lose so right jewels blah 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 so maybe that's how it's the good it's the intentions smart. were good right but there's no follow-through um, like he by the end of the film we have you know like and and i think it's a it's interesting and I, when i rewatched it yesterday how 
he gets this whatever microchip that kills Kerry Russell, and so that impairs him from saving Jules, and then Philip Seymour Hoffman can kick his ass. Like it's like in no universe would this happen. <laughs> yeah, but but because he can't move, right? Then yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman has the upper hand. I will appreciate how much of a bruiser Philip Seymour Hoffman is allowed to be. In this he movie, actually like he kicks the fucking shit. That, out okay, of him. that is an interesting point though, because I was just reading an article about like Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> Yeah. And about how yeah. like those guys are such narcissists. Yeah, and the clauses they have, yes. like the you, you so read, there's, there's clauses in yeah. their contract that basically say like the other guy can't kick the other guy's ass. So like if if like Vin Diesel and The Rock are fighting on screen, yeah. they have to have like equal like uh, like like blows if against you, one another. If, if you kick us, Rock if, or if you Vin kick Diesel one six times, right. so, you you gotta like the other person yeah. has to sucker wow. punch you. Which I, I yeah. actually, to Tom Cruise's credit, I don't think Tom Cruise has any interest in that. I don't right. think he is yes. vanity in I will that say sense. that in that like, sense, in that sense, he does not have yeah, vanity. He's an old school movie star. That, like, he's not on social media. He's not, like, he's not concerned with his image in that way. He just wants to like go make baller yes. movies. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. But he also is smart enough to know that like obviously this film is much better if mm-hmm. there's a scene where Philip Seymour Hoffman Kicks actually can kick the shit out of him. Right. Where he's put in a position of weakness. Right. Right. So he's smart enough to at least know that. I still think it comes from a place of narcissism, yeah, yeah. but he's smart enough to know that um, the film works right. better if he could do that. I, I think that uh, one thing that's interesting about your point about, because I do think there's still, I think that the best thing that Daniel Craig brings to the Bond films mm-hmm. is the sense of, I'm uncomfortable with Bond as a person. Like, I appreciate yes. that he's an alcoholic really in point. the films, that, like, I don't really know how to deal with him, that, like, he's irresponsible. Yeah. And he's misogynist. And he's miso- I mean, he's misogynist, <laughs> like, but it's really like, this isn't an open secret. Like, the movie deals with that. And yeah. I think totally, it, yeah. it, it definitely doesn't, like, let him off the hook. Right. Right? So it, it, in a weird way, questions, like, the validity of this kind of person being in a position of, like, law enforcement, yeah, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And I think that what's interesting is that I think Tom, like, to Tom, like, maybe in a weird way, Ethan Hunt is the best, like, metaphor for Tom Cruise, who is a, a person yeah. who's so controlling of his own image yeah. that Ethan Hawke can be nothing but ske- squeaky clean. Um, Ethan, Ethan Hunt, sorry, Ethan right. Hawke. <laughs> Ethan Hunt can be nothing but squeaky clean. And maybe to bring it back to what the podcast is about, mm. what works about Philip Seymour Hoffman as a character is that maybe that guy shouldn't exist in an Ethan Hunt universe. Where there's this Owen guy Davian? who's like yeah. very in control, but a lunatic yeah. who's like not afraid of anything, who can be a bruiser, but is also like kind of out of shape and overweight. Yeah. And who's like mm. not afraid yeah. to ex- I- 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 occupy space and be present. Yeah. And that's like not acceptable in the way that Ethan Hunt has to exist in a moral universe. You know, like yeah. he's he's kind of a a perversion of what like a character like Ethan Hunt would hold dear, which mm-hmm. is interesting yeah. because he's yeah. a fucking government crony. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, I not only just a yeah, government yeah, yeah. crony, yeah, like a yeah, like a CIA operative right. basically, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I I I like the fact I mean usually when I see like a version of Owen Davies or Davian? Davian. Davian. Get Davian right. sounds like a per- perfume right. or something. Oh, uh, Davian. Oh, like, Davian. 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 Like when I see a version of Owen Davian in like a Bond film, it's it's never done really well. That's true. The villains suck in Bond Because the opposite. Not I all like, the time, but I a like lot the, of the, time. The, the, bra- the brawlers in Bond yeah. films. Yeah. They're always great. Well, And also uh, not, Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem is oh great. Oh my God. Yeah. But, but yeah. Well, that's or the like, best Bond film ever made. I think. I, I think uh, it's almost. I think it, you're right. It's probably. like top, top, yeah, top, sure. top three. Maybe it's like so it's incredible, tight. Um, yeah. It's but also then, like has something to say that the others don't have. Right, anything to say. But I like I Skyfall. like the fact that Skyfall. Go see it. Um, out in theaters. Out in theaters now. now. Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> 2011. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back in time. Um, but I like we the fact that we started this much earlier. Can we got more listeners. <laughs> yeah. Please, please, we beg you. <laughs> we need it. But I like the fact that you know four, five, even six with um, with uh, Henry Cavill, like the the objective and intention is always like, well, this is a mission impossible. Right. Tom Ethan Hunt is a machine. He's he might like take a few hits, but you know he's gonna win. Right. And then JJ, I don't know if this was the first the original intention, but it's like no, no, we're gonna just have a schlubby guy who's like just like like really scary and like cold blooded. Yeah. And it, so he's not gonna be like the same level as Ethan. Of intensity, he's just, right? He's just gonna be like again sociopathic and like kidnap his his girl right like, you know that's trying to kill her in front of her yeah and that's why i think like you're in front of him, yeah. the the cavill thing is interesting because he's 
I think the only villain that on a physical presence can like mm-hmm. match his intensity. Where like when he's on the screen side by side with Tom Cruise, you're like, okay, this guy could legitimately like beat the shit out of him. Well, he's right. got those pistol arms. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like he the, reloads the, his arms. the other guys are like, oh, right. like like one on one fucking like Tom Cruise will destroy these guys. I agree with you. It's just that Henry Cavill can't act. So you yeah. you want to also talk about, opinion, you yeah. want to talk about the politics oh, a right. little bit more about like that scene which is, I think is like a really so the, one of the only scene scenes later where later in the movie there's where you reveal that Billy Crudup yeah. is um who's has been his boss in the film is now the bad guy and forgive me I'm paraphrasing a little bit I but know exactly I think I know he has a yeah. moment where he goes like we're gonna you know like g- give us what we need to know we're gonna in, we're we're gonna go into this we're gonna go to like a Middle Eastern country. And do what the United States does best. Oh, right. Rebuild. Infrastructure. So Demo- yeah. Infrastructure, democracy wins. Yeah. And I yeah. I had a moment where I went, this is a pretty, like, this is an interesting take. Yeah. This movie all of a sudden to drop, like, a yeah. America fucks up the Middle East yeah. statement. Like, totally, yeah. And, and JJ's know, like, not a political. No, but it's a very film, political moment. Filmmaker. And delivered yeah, yeah, yeah. by, like, the quarterback that is Billy Crudup's, like, beautiful American face. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. It just it stuck out to me. Yeah, there was that one episode of Felicity though, where she goes down to Occupy Wall Street, which was kind of really <laughs> like Neutral Milk Hotel yeah. is yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I realized Felicity was probably Felicity after, like, way like, before that. Yeah, but dirty I don't know. grubs. <laughs> I do love the line. When is it? Um, I'm gonna butcher it, but when when like. Ethan has like the Hannibal Lecter mask, or whatever, yes. and and you think Billy Crudup is like tentatively think you think he's helping him, but he's like. Sending him to a trap, like reading lips, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then he leaves, and then Lars Fishman either before or after comes in, and it's like a POV shot, yes, yeah. And he kneel- and he's like, I swear to God, like, what is it? Um, I'll if I have to, so help me God, I'll I'll make you bleed so that the red on the flag stays red. Well, I thought right, he said, right, I, right, said right, I'll, right. I would bleed. Oh, so maybe. Right. I or I'll, 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 Lawrence or, Fishburne is, but don't remember, and then and then movie. like he's, and Ethan's like, and he's like, what? He's like, take off the mask. He takes off the mask. He's like, I fucked the flag right now. <laughs> Satan's. He's like, all right, put, put, just put the, the mask back on. I'll fuck the flag. I'll fuck the flag. I'll the flag. Just put it out. Put the mask on. So, so I don't know. This is the so that and like, he's like fervently patriotic. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. But Billy Crudup's like, nah, man. Like, yeah. we're just gonna do the thing that we do all the right. time. And oh, this yeah. is two thousand six. Two thousand seven. Yeah. Two thousand six. This is like two thousand six. Yeah. I, like, I do want to go back and see if Jose is right. Maybe he does say I'll make you bleed. But I thought he said I'm, I'll. I'll I or or bleed. maybe or maybe it's like yeah. I'll 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 I would I'll shed blood. Yeah. For the as flag. long as yeah. the blo- you know the red on the flag stays red or something. Yeah. yeah. Very, like I don't think the the later movies dwell into this no. stuff at all. Yeah. Not at all. And the fact that. Phil Seymour Hoffman, I mean, John Voight, yeah, American. There's, t- what, two Americans in the... And Harry Cable, I guess it's part of the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, like, looking in... and But you don't tie it... I guess they tie it into it, because you see Phil Seymour Hoffman leaves, and then Billy Crudup sits down. It's revealed that he's a villain. It's a great reveal. So they've been working together. And there's that little whispering of him being like, I just have to ask you a question. Oh, uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's like they... He just forces, like, that kind of U.S. kind of... Yeah, the darks, the dark underpinning. But it seems to be self-aware and yeah. like pretty cynical. Yeah, which I thought was pretty like because I remember seeing this. I was in two thousand six, and like, I mean, whatever. What <laughs> <laughs> now isn't great. Now <laughs> yeah, the no. present nah. tense that yeah, we're living yeah. in is not great. <laughs> yeah. But we're less concerned with our like international oil race invasion than we were ten years ago or right. thirteen years ago when this thing came out. Right. So it kind of made me go like, "Fuck, this is a two- this is a, the Hollywood movie in two thousand six. Right. Like, I don't know. I just thought well, it was well. And that's something that Follow tries to correct, right? Like uh, towards the end, it's it's that that like the agency yeah. is like divided between the old school like how they compare like Ethan Hunt being a having a what is it scalpel versus like a, a sledgehammer yes, or something yes, yeah. yes yes well one thing the other movies do the later movies do later that they do really well is they're like these guys are a bunch of fuck ups yeah yes. yeah, that, yeah. These, that this movie but he's still like a he's still a scalpel but whereas again, I feel like in right. 6 he's a fucking bludgeon but again to yeah. be clear the fact that like the primary hero again there's like no moral qualms about right. him and he's totally totally yes. like squeaky clean is in itself like super reactionary. So even though the film does drop that in, it's only so like Ethan Hunt, the pure mm-hmm. kind of like American, I- the, yeah. American well, ideal, can like reverse like can reverse like all the shittiness. Let's say that Billy right. Crudup's character is like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, like what democracy is like in the United States. It doesn't exist. We fucking take over places and just build infrastructure. So right. do you feel like 
the movie dispels that idea by by Ethan Hawk uh, Ethan Hunt. I'm sorry, <laughs> Ethan Hawk by Ethan Hunt winning. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. See, I don't know if I view it that way because I don't I don't necessarily know that we're meant to draw like a, a moral clarity from the ending of a Mission Impossible movie. Yeah, but that's Wait, but we're both the whole thing's like yeah. they walk over they like walk away to the sunset. And yeah, they, like I mean that's like true. Yay, that's true. Yeah. Well, every yeah. American action film is a western, right? right. A little bit, yeah, so yeah, for so sure. There's that quality of. And don't get me wrong; like these films are fucking entertaining as fuck. And when oh, the yeah. next one comes but out in 2021, it's, it's yeah. worth talking. About. I will, I will be first one in line. But yeah. yeah, the politics are really regressive, right? And reactionary. And even, I mean, and maybe slightly going back to Bond, like in a way, he is like a loner. I mean, right. both Ethan Hunt is a loner too, but there's more of a consistent political ex- examination of examination of politics in Bond, the recent ones at least. Well, uh, that yes. scene in the last one where he fucks the Union Jack, I mean, really... <laughs> he comes all <laughs> over it. Really subversive. Really. But I th- out of hey, nowhere. Bring, bring that flag, flag over like, here. The big, I'm gonna fuck me, it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Bond doesn't sound like that. But I think that like the three... The no, it's Judy Dench. <laughs> 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 I think the three sort of spy current spy franchises are you have so you have the Mission Impossible films which are all dealt d- built by a different director experimenting a little bit mm-hmm. and then you have the Bond films which is a similar thing but the core of Bond and the thing that makes the the recent Bond films work is like what's the how relevant mm-hmm. is Bond, 007. Yeah. yeah right. And I think that Skyfall answers that question in the, m- or, or addre- not even answers, but explores that question Puts in this it out fundamental there. way yeah. because it's like, do we need these, like, he's a bulldog. Like, she has a bulldog on her desk. Q has a, um, I'm sorry, uh, M, M has yeah. a bulldog on her desk. Yeah. Who's and they're shutting it down, and then right. Ray Fiennes is about to shut down right. th- then down and and it's like and then he realizes the, the validity of a, of a figure like that, which, like, I think the movie does a really nice job of going, like, we need modern measures, but we also need these like motherfuckers that are that are this way. Mm-hmm. And then you have the 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 Bourne films, mm-hmm. oh. which are. I thought you were gonna say the Before Trilogy, the Third Spy. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, Ethan Hawke. Like, I was like, yeah. But um, <laughs> one of the things that makes the Bourne films really interesting is that three of the five of them are directed by a British socialist. Oh, mm. whose whole attitude, the key line to the entire Bourne franchise is, "Look what they make you do." Yeah. yeah, like the yeah. whole question like of porn is, yeah, is, and, and he's like a we're victim. being lied to. He doesn't know who he is, right? He's be, he's, but yeah, he's, he's like a victim of of, of, the, of, of the agency, of American yeah. American. His actions are his not. Actions. Is it, he's not. He's not in control not of them. Control. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, point, yeah. of the three, the one that I trust the least is Ethan Hunt. Because he's sort of a facsimile of like American imperialism a little bit, mm. because he still sells the virtues of um, of America, right? And by that I mean the American government right. saving the world, yeah. but saving the world for like to some extent capitalist interests. Yeah, yeah. I just I didn't think of that till now. That's but it pretty just good. Came I liked to me. it. Whereas like Bond is a little more nuanced and a little more complicated, right? There's more. There's more like. Transparency or like, yeah. intr- like there's a, the introspection is being well, he's played more of a out. Person, well, but right? yes, yeah, yeah. and that, but that's also like again, what is interesting about like the Bond films and also makes them potential reactionary is that they're much more about him like as an individual. Mm-hmm. So that the secondary yeah. stuff about like what he's doing in terms of politics yeah. is very much in the background and the foreground is like the moral conflicts that he has and mm-hmm. as an individual. Yeah, well, and also like Bond is supposed to be the whole thing with him being a double O is the license to kill, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's interesting. Like, the core question of that character is who does he kill? Right. And so you're allowing an overaged alcoholic <laughs> yeah. a license to kill. Yeah. Whereas I don't think you spend any time watching Ethan Hunt going like, who's this there's guy nothing, killing? There's he no, never yeah. fires a gun, with the yeah. exception, if you yes. think about it, it was the second one, he becomes this, like, shooting Double guns and, right, like, right, right. like full-on action, like, Van, you know, not Van Damme, but, like, Stallone or whatever. That's m- he's more akin to Fires that. Fires a gun a little bit in the, in this one in the bridge. On sequence. the bridge, yeah, but not right. like yeah. But it's literally and then and then there was a lot of com- kind of not kung fu, but a lot of like martial arts in the second one. Now it's more like I think in Fallout Stunts he doesn't. And, yeah. he, it's more like yeah, acrobatic. I can't really remember a single gun battle in the in the. No, yeah. uh, are, are but it's always like battles, getting escaping or like right. fleeing or like it's more like you know. It is very hand. American and that the whole core of the later movies is like, we fucked up. How do we fix it? Like, that yeah. seems very kind of yeah. like pivotal to that yeah. the character. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I, and I guess, I, yeah, I, I guess 
bringing back a Philip Seymour, it's like, it's always like villains usually are, they have, they have a pathway. I mean, I think that's what makes Philip Seymour Hobbins so good in this, what makes Javier Bardem so good in Skyfall, that usually it's like villains have a pathway to their goal. Right. And they're, the, vi- the hero is a nuisance. You're getting in my way. Right. Like, like overcome, like you know, suppress him, keep going, or right. her. With Philip Seymour Hoffman and Javier Bardem, it's like, no, no, I want to destroy. Uh, if you get in my way, like I'm They're gonna, sadists. I'm gonna take something yeah. from you. Yeah. Javier takes M. Right, 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 and, uh, right, right, And right. he takes Jules and uh, Philip Seymour. So, and I think that elevates, like, again, it it r- removes it from this, like, oh, it's it's another secret agent movie and or whatever. And to some extent, you know, a couple of years later, you're going to have, uh, well, so a couple of years after this, you're going to have Javier Bardem and Skyfall, but you're also going to have right. uh, uh, the Joker and Dark Knight, who oh, yeah. is sort of the penultimate, it's like, a, a really you have a choice to make. Yeah. Um, those are Like, choose your incredible. professional life versus choose your personal mm-hmm. life. And this movie... There's a lot of there's just a lot of like re- repetition. Yeah. That, and then JJ would kind of bring that back in Star Trek Into Darkness. Yeah. Where it doesn't work nearly as well. With uh with Cumberbatch. Yeah. With yeah. Cumberbatch's yeah. Khan. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Right. Khan is like a rip. I don't know. It's interesting. So. But anyway. him revisiting a franchise, you know, like JJ doing Star Trek and, and JJ doing Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible, a TV show, and then trying to bring in like a formidable villain, who's more cerebral and. And and it not really working in the later case. Well, Correct. At least with, with and with Star Benedict, Trek into yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just a weird. It's weird. It's well, and I'll say this: you mentioned Batman. The way that Phil Seymour Hoffman is killed, it's so disappointing. It is, yeah. It and really then it reminded is. me it's of how speed. It's how they speed. killed it's how Dennis Hopper dies in speed. <laughs> but it also like reminded me of Bane in Dark Knight Rises, like yeah. th- that that it's like afterthought. They just shoot him and boom. And then this case, it's just like it's kind of cartoonish because you see that the shoe flying yeah. off or whatever. Right. It, it ha- I haven't sung in this episode, so if I could do something else, that would be really great. Which is, <laughs> it doesn't matter who we are. <laughs> yeah. What matters <laughs> is our plan. <laughs> yeah. The and fire uh, rises. Is, he's a mate. Uh, he's so good. How the fun would it have so been to record all that? All those new ones. <laughs> uh, and on that note, any final thoughts? <laughs> well, I do would like to say that we're talking about Batman is that uh, in, a, in a more perfect universe, yeah. they would have made a Batman movie. With Philip Seymour Hoffman as Penguin, as Oswald. Uh, yeah, I think they, they probably were talking about that for a while. Can you Ugh. imagine? And make it like, because I think DeVito did a great job as a freakish person, but but like a rooted, angry, yeah, uh, like, like disgusting, like not like, freak, like, not like, like an actual not like monster. Freak. Because yeah. Bane in in Dark Knight Rises is not that different from Penguin in Batman Returns. Like he's from under the earth yeah. and he has like social rage at the right. conditions of the world and bring I don't it know, all down. Right. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. If okay. only. The alternate one. universe. Fuck. Alternate universe. The, the loss of this guy is monumental. It's pretty <laughs> amazing. It's dark. Uh, but uh, the fact that he got to yell at Tom Cruise is pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> or like so belittle, belittle him. Yeah. Well, I'm Liam Billingham. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Jose. Can we plug Jose's oh amazing God. work? Oh, Jose, talk to tell yes. us. I'm sorry. That was rude. <laughs> no, Jose, no. Before we go, yeah. where can we see some of your work, what you're working on? So uh, I did a fee, uh, a doc short a couple uh, a year ago, two years ago, called Adolescencia, Spanish uh, Adolescence. Uh, and it's on Vimeo. I really don't know how you would. I mean, j- maybe just Google. Just we'll, 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 we'll provide links. Oh, yeah. So Adolescencia yeah. Is, yeah. is openly accessible. Um, and then I have a new short called Mama Mama. Just it's phenomenal. I've seen it. Yeah. Thank you, Liam. Oh, um, buddy. it's a, it's an experimental short, uh, and it's actually screened here in New York at Bushwick Film Festival at Nighthawk Shorts last year. And it nice. has like one more festival to go. Um, that one's not yet available, but probably in, in a couple of months it will be. I'm They're a know. really good short double feature, having seen both of them. Yeah, it's kind of like two two uh, the two sides of the same coin. Nice. Yeah. And are you working on anything else or like plans for yeah, something? Yeah, and I'm soon? actually literally right before coming here, I was trying to, I was tinkering on Premiere with uh, maybe a new, a third short. <gasps> Be a c- a sillier, a trilogy <laughs> of of high eight footage, yeah. Um, so this is, I mean, I think that this is most of these films are footage that you have that I shot when I was like from growing up, a, like a teenager in Puerto Rico, yeah, in two thousand two, nice. sort of re-edited and reused, repurposed. Sort of so there's like, like an archival kind of yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're really great. They're really good. Yeah, I highly recommend everybody watch them. And and I guess the last thing is, um, I run this little film club with a friend of mine, Tim Noble. 
It's called Film Force. And what we do is we pick filmmakers, friends of ours, creative people who either have done shorts or have never done a short. And we give them a script consisting entirely of dialogue. And they have one or two months to make a short out of it. Um, we're entering, we're in our sixth edition. Um, and we're, we're always looking for people, whether it's actors, actresses, directors, cinematographers, editors, you name it. So if you want to learn more, go to thisisfilmforce.com. Awesome. George and I have to do this because we've been talking about yeah. doing a little film together. Yeah, so. yeah. and I, I've yeah, had you on, the, on yeah. my list, so I'd love you to have both you of you. You and I have been going That'd back be and forth. I've been yeah. like, yeah. I totally want to do this, yeah. Yeah. and then it's life so happens. No, but yeah. 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 Uh, and we'll definitely provide links for everything, too. Oh, cool. yeah, 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 no, please. Yeah, send them on over. Uh, thank you. This Thanks. Thank you. This yeah. is so fun. This was like a joy. We'll have you back. Oh, yeah. we'll have you back, but also, like, can we just talk about Mission Impossible? We should definitely do the entire got We got to do a round, another way to get into Mission Impossible. We don't have a plan for the season three yet, but I already know what the movie for season oh. three is. Oh, that's what <laughs> I'm Liam Billingham. I'm George Vergopoulos. I'm Jose Rodriguez. And this was... Uber Buster! <laughs> my, my brother and I always go like, is it? and the baby? And then it's going to be really like, no, he's sleeping. And he goes, no, but I would. <laughs> And he goes, woo! And he goes like, woo! <laughs> Dana! Yeah, Dana. Dana. <laughs> Do you help? What?